Hello, my name is Mira Ba and I'm a junior at Montgomery High School in New Jersey. Welcome back to the interview series on colleges and careers where I talk to established professionals from a wide range of careers to learn and gain a well-rounded understanding about different careers and different pathways to success. Today, I'm so excited to speak with Ms. Dina Paolucci, the managing broker of the Weicker Tenafly and Oradell offices. Being licensed as a real estate sales associate since 2005, Ms. Paolucci has a lot of experience listing and selling real estate and now has a primary focus of coaching experienced associates to advance and grow their business. Welcome, Ms. Paolucci. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you so okay. much for having me here. Of course. So to start, I was hoping that you'd be able to give me a brief summary of your career from the beginning to where you are now. You know, I, um, I, I, I <laughs> it's, it was a long road, right? Yeah, um, yeah. I did not start out in real estate. It wasn't mm -hmm. my intention to ever become a real estate agent. This was sort of, this happened by accident. Um, okay. I, I had a career in uh, the corporate world. I worked for an audiovisual company. Um, I was an operations director for them and I ran their business center division. So when you went into the business center a million years ago in a hotel, um, uh, you know, because you didn't carry your computer with you and we had copiers and workstations and um, I, I got laid off and I got laid off in 2004 and um, sat back for a while and said, you know, all right, I had been doing that 10 years-ish, a little bit more, and said, you know what, this is an opportunity here, and, and what do I want, who, what do I want to do when I grow up, and mm -hmm. um, I explored a couple of different things, and, you know, enough people had said to me over the years, uh, you should, you should be a real estate agent, you should, you'd be really good at you, so I figured, you know what, what the heck, let me give this a try, Right. And, um, you know, so it, it, no looking back from there. And my only regret was that I didn't quit that corporate job 10 years previous and start doing this sooner. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got here. That's right. how I got here. Totally by accident. Okay. Yeah. So I guess that's interesting because a lot of people, you know, especially in high school, you're like, oh, I want to start out and like do one thing, but it's not always, that's not how it always works out. And I mean, and, you didn't and, always know you wanted to do that, but then once you started, it like worked out. So. And and had I done what I thought I wanted to do when I graduated high school, I'd be an accountant now. So I actually never did that, you know? Right. And um, I, I think I'm in the right place, so. Okay, yeah. that's really interesting. Yeah. So what does a typical day or week look like for you doing what you do? Well, you know, for me, it's, it's a little bit different because I am in a managerial role. Uh, I'm a managing broker, um, at, but for a typical real estate agent, right? Because when you come in, um, in New Jersey, I can only speak to New Jersey, but I think it's true of most states. Right. You have to work as a, a, a salesperson before you can go into management and get, become a broker. Mm -hmm. So for a typical sales agent, um, it, it's kind of, there really is no typical day. You know, this is a career and a, a, an industry where every day does bring something different. Right. Um, however, I can tell you what I tell my agents, uh, a typical day of a very successful agent should look like. Um, hours spent on the telephone, making follow-up phone calls, um, calling potential home sellers and potential mm -hmm. home buyers, looking for people who want to sell their homes or want to buy a home. Uh, it's, you know, it's not what everybody sees on HGTV, you know, <laughs> it, that love fest with the buyers and the agents seeing homes and negotiating. That's about 25 or 30 percent of the job. Mm -hmm. The other 70% of it really is finding where those people are and doing right. the things that you need to do uh, with, with marketing. And, you know, you wear many hats in, in a real estate, uh, right, in right. a real estate career. You kind of wear okay. all the hats. No. So yeah. I think you touched on this earlier, but um, 
I wanted to go back to like the education aspect mm -hmm. of this. So like, do you need a college degree? How do you become a real estate agent? What certification? So to, to get licensed in the state of New Jersey, the requirements are simply you need to be 18 years old. You need a uh, high school diploma or equivalent. Um, and you need to take a 75 hour licensing course. And okay. once you take that 75 hour class, then you're eligible to sit and take the state licensing exam. Uh, and our, our licenses are issued by the Real Estate Commission, which is part of the Department of Banking and Insurance. And so we get licensed similarly the way a, a lender, a loan officer at a bank would be licensed and, and by the state. Now, that being said, um, you know, 75 hours in a class does not really qualify you. It allows you to go sell real estate. It doesn't right. qualify you to do that, if, if that makes sense, you know. Um, the, the, tr the education on negotiating contracts, writing contracts, how do you market a home, um, all of those things, that comes with on-the-job training. Mm -hmm. There's typically some mentorship that happens in most with most brokerages. Um, some brokerages have extensive training platforms. Others kind of you're a little bit more on your own. Uh, one of the things that attracted me to the brokerage where I ended up was their training, because as I said, this was sort of plan B for me mm -hmm. and um, I wanted it to work. And in my previous corporate career, I had done a lot of training, a lot of sales training for our, um, you know, for our population. And so I was kind of hyper-focused on that. So, um, it, you know, the training, it's a, it's a train and learn as you go business. So I, I tend to tell the new agents that I hire that your first year in the business really is school, you know, and, um, you may earn a little bit less money and maybe work a little bit harder than you would normally, but that's the cost of your education sort of, right. um, you know, so, so you do have that ability to earn while you're learning, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. Oh, that's interesting. I never knew that. Mm -hmm. um, so to piggyback off that last question, what types of people are suited for this profession? Certain skills, personality type. Yeah. I know that usually realtors are seen as people who are outgoing or like talkative, but is that necessarily true? You know, it, it really does run the gamut. And mm -hmm. if you think about who our, our clients are, it's everyone, you know what I mean? It's everyone because mm -hmm. everyone has to live someplace. And um, so different people connect with different personality types. And I, I've seen all sorts of personality types uh, come into this business and be successful in it. I will say though that you do have to have a little bit of an ego, let's put it that way, <laughs> a little bit of um, a little bit of fearlessness to mm -hmm. go out and put yourself out there, and um, you know it's it's it, it just, as in any career, right? Uh, you go out there and you don't know anything, and somebody's going to ask you a question. Right, and you're going to be like, ah, what do I? So to, to you have to be able to um, work yourself through that fear and do it anyway. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you have to be the type of person who is willing to try something before they know everything about it. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, I, you're never going to know enough about a town to answer every single question about that right. town. So if you don't go do an open house in that town because you don't know where every single New Jersey transit bus stop is, you know, I, I've been doing this almost 16 years now, I think. And mm -hmm. I, I get asked questions every single day that I don't know the answer to, right. you know, and that's okay. That's okay. Um, because our role as a real estate agent is not the, to be the oracle of all things. It's, it's more to be a guide mm -hmm. through the process and, and to be a resource. And if, if I don't know where, where it is, I'll find out where it is. Um, so it, as far as qualities, you know, a little bit of a piece of people person, you've got to be, um, you have to have an entrepreneurial spirit. And that was, that's one thing that I think most 
most people don't understand fully. Um, I know I didn't when I got my license that you are starting your own business when you sell mm. real estate. You affiliate with a broker. Uh, as a salesperson, you have to be affiliated with a brokerage um, in order to, essentially in order to get paid. Mm -hmm. um, but how you run your business and what you do with your business, you know, this is a straight commission sales position. There are no benefits. Um, you don't get paid until and unless somebody buys a house. So there's, um, you know, you, you're, this is just like if you went and opened up a, a, a deli or a restaurant or, um, you know, a, or a gift shop, you're, you're starting your own business. So you do have to have that um, entrepreneurial drive, I think, right. in your stomach that you want to build something and that you're willing to work very hard for it. Because mm -hmm. there are a lot of misconceptions, I think, about what we do and how we do it. Um, there's, you know, the misconception, I think, of flexibility. A lot of people say, well, you know, the hours are flexible. And, and I think what people hear internally when they hear flexible is, I don't have to work as many hours. And it's, it's sort of every once in a while, I'll joke and say, you know, your first year, it's completely flexible. You can work whatever 60 hours you want to work this week. Mm. right? You pick them, you know? Mm -hmm. So and just like any other business you're trying to get up off the ground, you've got to put in a lot of hard work in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and then you earn the flexibility later. Right. You earn that later, you know, where you do have a lot of flexibility. So. Wow. That's really, that's, a, I think that's a good uh, summary that you were able to give on like <laughs> who is suited, but suited for the job, but also right. like you know, it's not all that it seems necessarily. Well, it's, 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 it's phenomenal. I love it. I, you yeah. know, and there's, you truly, you have an ability to all the cliches about, you know, unlimited earning potential and whatnot. They're, they're there um, because they're true. You know, it really is true. Uh, you can make an, an extraordinarily good living, um, and still have a life that allows you to do things like, um, you know, be at, at your child's softball game or mm -hmm. go on the school trip on a Thursday afternoon. Yeah. Uh, so, so it does allow for a lifestyle that I think maybe a lot of the nine to five corporate world does not allow. Mm -hmm. So I think you just answered the first part of my next question, which uh, is, what do you like about working in this job? But so you did answer that, but well, this is part, part of it. Yes. Yeah. 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 And so the second part was just what don't what's maybe not your favorite and what don't mm -hmm. a lot of people know? So my 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 what I like about it. Yes, that type of integration with your life is great. Mm -hmm. But the secondary thing and which kind of became a primary thing that I wasn't anticipating mm -hmm. and um, did not expect was how truly gratifying it is to help people. You know, most for most Americans, the purchase of a home is gonna be the largest purchase that they ever make. It's the largest mm -hmm. investment most people will ever make. And then the sale of that home right, is extraordinarily important. There's the people are selling homes where they've lived for um, 10, 20, 30 years and, and their life has been there, the memories, everything that they carry with them and how it, it just feels really good to help somebody do that and get to the right place and build a home. Um, and, and so, like I said, that was kind of a little perk that I was like, oh, I, I, you know, I, I should have known that that would have been part of it. Yeah, but it is. Um, it's not so much what I don't like, or like you said, the things that people don't realize about the job. Um, it is straight commission. So like, again, you know, you, you're um, what if you're working with a buyer for, you know, months and months and months, or, or whatever, and they don't end up buying anything, you don't get paid. And that's just part of the job, right? right. Um, 
if you list a home and it doesn't sell, you don't get paid and, you know, or reimbursed for any of your expenses across that. That's what you do gain from all of those things, those education and experience. Right. You know, and you're meeting more people along the way. So there's the next deal. That's kind of the roller coaster of, of a commission sales business, especially in the beginning. But once you get it running, um, a good professional sales agent has a constant pipeline of business and they pretty much can forecast what their business is going to be. Um, so a, a good skill to have is budgeting because sometimes you get paid a lot of money in one month and then you don't get anything for a couple of months and you can't go buy the car, you know, because mm -hmm. you have to pay the mortgage next month. So um, that's a good skill to have, but it's, uh, you know, there are very few things about it that I don't like. So I, I like I said, I'm, yeah, I drank the Kool-Aid with real estate. <laughs> it's just, and I, it's, it's been, I've met so, the most wonderful people. Um, you know, I, I've, I work with wonderful people. Um, there's a misconception. I'll give you a misconception that real estate is very cutthroat as a business. You'll hear that if you're getting into the business that um, real estate agents can be very cutthroat. And um, the majority of real estate agents, uh, I say 99.9% .9 of us will help, will go out of our way to assist another agent. Um, we are, the, the real estate agents that I've encountered for 16 years are ethical, honest, hardworking people, you know? So those are a couple of the misconceptions. Right. And I think the earlier piece you said about gratification is something that a lot of people try to find in their careers. Um, yeah. Because, you know, that that is kind of like a huge part of your life. So I guess that's nice to hear. Um, yeah. And so moving on to the next part, um, what advice would you offer to people who are interested in real estate or entering real estate as a profession? You know, first of all, go to real estate school, take the 75 hour course and pass the state exam and get your license. Because once you do that and you get a real estate license, you don't actually have to be an active working salesperson. You can take your real estate license and put it in what is called a referral status, right? Mm -hmm. And then as you're going through your life, if you meet somebody who wants to buy or sell a home, you can refer them to a working real estate agent and you can receive a portion of the commission as a referral fee. And you can't do that unless you're licensed. So okay. if even in the back of your mind, some look, I think everybody should have their license just to put it in referral and you know you, because everybody again everybody has to live someplace mm -hmm. which means that you know in any given year you're going to meet three four ten people who are going to be making a move and you could be referring those people so start just by going to school and you know it's not a huge investment in time or in in money um to to go to real estate school like it's 75 hours you know that's two weeks full-time if you did a full-time class nine to four thirty um and real estate school currently in new jersey is around four hundred dollars give or take and so you know that you'll find out if certain aspects of the business spark an interest in you or not just by doing that mm -hmm. um but it would, and then if it turns out, no, it's not wasted because you can have it as a referral license. Right. Um, I would suggest that you talk to a working real estate agent, you know, like, like you're doing here. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, if you've got a friend or a family member who's working as, uh, as a realtor, talk to them and go talk to a brokerage, go talk to a manager at, a, at an office um, mm -hmm. and talk to more than one of them because, different brokerages approach training and coaching and um, generating leads different ways. And even within brokerages, different managers in different offices run their different, their, their business differently. Right. So, so that's kind of, you know, stick your toes in the water. Yeah. Right. 
Well, that's interesting. Okay, so I know that you keep uh, mentioning the idea that, you know, people always need to buy a house. So I think that, you know, I always ask people who I interview, like, what is the scope of this profession or the status in the future? And like you said, people will always need to buy a house. So You know, when I, when I got into the business um, 16 years ago, mm-hmm. it was the doom and gloom of the internet's going to wipe out our, our profession. Right. Um, And there are always those naysayers. But here's what I'll tell you, you know, when somebody's buying a home, if you're buying a car, you know, you've got 20 different brands, however many models to choose from. Mm -hmm. Um, You see them every day. You've been in a few of them, but you're going to own that vehicle for a few years, maybe 10. You know, it's not it's not a home and right. real estate is a face-to-face business. And as much technology, uh, as, as much as technology has changed the way we do the business mm-hmm. at the core of it, all it has really done is changed the way that we get face-to-face with somebody. Right. So uh, 20 years ago, you wanted to buy a house. You had, to, if you were an agent, you had to go into the office to work because that's where the phone was, mm-hmm. right? You know, and so it, this is everything that we're doing here on camera. You know, eventually, if you're going to buy a house, we're going to be standing on a sidewalk together, right. talking, connecting, working. You, as I said, it's the largest investment people will make, m- most of them. It's a complicated process. It's a very Mm -hmm. complicated process with uh, a lot of places where you can misstep through the process and um, you need somebody licensed to guide you through that. And home buyers need, you know, want that guidance through the process. Uh, Home sellers want that guidance through the process. So we're going to be here until people don't need to live any place anymore. So, (laughs) yes, yeah, yeah. And um, lastly, I know you kind of mentioned this as well, um, but what is the range of what you can earn in this profession? Yeah, it's, you know, I I always struggle with answering that question, right? Uh Um, It's going to depend, realistically, it's going to depend on where where you are in, in the state, in the country, what is the average sales price in that in that area, right? A higher price, the higher sales price area versus a lower sales price area. Um, I think the National Association of Realtors averages the average income is, is only around forty thousand dollars. But when you look at that number, I think it's very important to understand that you know. I said at the beginning that you're starting your own business when you do this. Your your startup cost for your real estate license, um, when you're if you're going to be working, you're talking about maybe twelve hundred dollars, fifteen hundred dollars to get in and get all your everything, your memberships and your licenses in place, mm-hmm. and then the maintenance on that is about a thousand dollars a year. So it's not an extraordinarily expensive business to maintain. Right. We have a lot of agents. Um, uh, you know, I was, I was uh, on the board of directors at uh, the board, uh, the real estate, the association of realtors in Mercer County. Um, and I know it's the same up here in Burton County. There's a good half of our membership mm-hmm. that is not really working. Right. And, and I know this from managing three different offices. Now there's a, a good I want to say third to a half of the agents in the office that might sell one house a year because it is not their primary job or they only kind of got their license to, you know, occasionally work with a family member or because they own their own investment properties. Mm -hmm. And so they might do one or two. So that number of $40,000 is very skewed, very skewed because you can almost take half of half of the agent population out of the number. Um, Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, you know, your first year in the business, I have had agents that have made, you know, 60 grand in their first year. 
I've had agents that have made 20. It's, it's a business that, again, the cliche, you get out what you put into it. You get out of it what you put into it. And it, it's true. It's true. Right. Well, I definitely so, learned a lot today. So now that's your one experienced agents. This guy, it's, it's, you know, if you bring home a quarter of a million, a half a million a year, that's, you can do that easily. Mm -hmm. so, okay. That's interesting. Right. So thank you so much yeah. for uh, speaking with me. I definitely learned a lot and I'm sure, you know, other people will also benefit. Um, so yeah, thank you. And it, do you have any thank last you. remarks to leave us with? No, just, I think this is a wonderful thing that you're doing. And um, the only thing, you know, you had, uh, you had sent me a couple of questions, right? And you, you said something, you, or you had said something like, if I, would I have done things differently, ha you know, going through and right. what advice? And I, I just see that there is so much pressure on, um, I saw it with my children, you know, you now that you're kind of required to determine what the rest of your life is going to look like when you're not even 20 years old yet. And right. um, I, so I, I, I don't think I would have done it differently, you know, even knowing that what I was going to school for accounting is something that I have absolutely no interest in, you know? Mm -hmm. So if I think back to, if I had done it differently, yeah, I would have explored different interests, but you know, I love where I am. Right. So I might not have ended up where I am. So I think that the only, I guess, advice I'd give people is don't put so much pressure on yourself because um, life is long and it's fluid mm -hmm. and allow yourself to kind of follow opportunities when they right. present themselves to you because you never know where you're going to end up and it could be someplace really good. All okay. right. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, I think that's a nice sentiment. A lot of people um, that I've, you know, spoken to always uh, say like, just say yes to opportunities that you're interested right. in and, you know, you can just see what happens. Right. Right. All right. Well, thank you so All much right. once again. Thank you so much, Mira, for doing this. <laughs>